Hey guys, happy whatever day you're watching this on. I'm recording this on 4th of July. I know, I look retarded. Do you like the color scheme though? I think it's cute. Okay. Wow, I like lost my voice while saying that. I'm gonna get started because this is a really long, crazy vivid drink part 4 question mark or 5. I don't know. You saw the title. Anyways, let's get started. So, things that need to be established. Um, number one, there are scenes in my dreams sometimes. And in this one, scenes are kind of like in a movie where they just show you different places but there's not a direct movement it just goes from room to room basically and then number two jake is in this dream he is basically the only other character in this and um when i have these dreams they feel very real therefore there's a lot of detail sit down grab a snack watch some fireworks while you're at it let's get started so in the first scene um me and jake are walking around a small village and we're just having fun and there is no talking in my dream which is very rare i'm always talking can you tell okay so there's no talking in my dream there's only eye contact we're just running i'm giggling and everything is in slow motion and the part that i remember from being in slow motion is that there's this little gap between the train and where we are at which is the concrete floor so i jump onto the train and it's literally like this like onto the train like really really slow motion and i can hear myself giggling like right here like if i were watching a movie with headphones on very strange but that's how i dream so after i got onto the train i remember i almost said his real name Fuck. jake just waved goodbye as saying that he wasn't coming on with me so that was fine so the doors shut and i was completely alone on this train and it was the longest train i've ever dreamt of it was extremely long and i was the only one here but I sit down nonetheless, and then the scene cut completely, and I'm in a black room. In this black room, oh, I forgot to tell you guys what I was wearing. And this part is really, I think, important because of the timing. But we are wearing out of the century outfits. I am wearing a blue choker and then a denim skirt with like this tie dye rainbow shirt with like four straps on each side. And it makes no sense. And I'm a ginger. Like, I'm naturally a ginger, but in this dream, I had ginger hair, which is unlike me. And Jake um, was wearing a white t-shirt with a high collar, blue jeans. His hair was slicked back. He was wearing Converse, which is not like him, neither is the hair, because he has curly hair naturally. To slick that back, that takes a long time. But he looked very, like, 50s slash 60s, and I looked very 90s, which makes no sense. There's no correlation to why we were wearing that, but we were. And then, again, the scene cut and I'm in a black room, and in this black room, my presence isn't known. It's kind of like I'm living it at this point. Before, it was kind of like watching a movie, and I could see myself, but this time, it was like I was living in it, and in the middle of the room is a ring of fire, and in this ring of fire, it's that's the only thing in the room, and I can hear it in my ears, the sizzling, the burning of whatever it is, and it's extremely bright, but it's very, very far away from me, and then after I see that, scene cuts again and i'm on the train completely alone staring off through the windows and the windows literally only show white like i think it's a metaphor that this train was leading to nowhere and if you've seen spirited away it's kind of like that kind of train setting but it was literally leading to nowhere <laughs> and after that the a bell is rung and we stop and no one gets on nobody so then again we stop nobody gets on and on the third stop stop again and i'm waiting for nobody to get on and jake that's his name jake gets on and instead of i kind of gesture for him to sit next to me with my eyes i'm like like you know come sit next to your best friend you know like wouldn't that make sense but he kind of just looks at me weird and he nods he shakes his head no and he's just standing near like the corner of the train where the pole is and he's just grabbing on and it was really weird because i'm like why wouldn't you just come sit next to me and then we stop again and every time we stop it gets hotter in the train kind of more compressed and it feels like there's people there but i can't see them and i have a feeling jake can but we have to get into more of the story so um what is it called uh we get through more stops and then we're just driving along no big deal and we are kind of just making eye contact, laughing at each other, smiling at each other, flirting with each other, but we aren't speaking. And finally, oh, that was disgusting. I'm so sorry, but what do you expect from me? I'm gross. And 
we get off at the specific stop and automatically you it's like hearing a stampede it's like as everybody gets off but i can't see anybody and it was weird and all of a sudden i was cold again and i i felt the space and it was really weird and i looked at jake and he looked back at me and he ran over to where i was and we were sitting directly in front of each other crisscross applesauce so we're like this all right crisscross applesauce staring at each other and jake kind of um leans into me like he's going to kiss me but in this dream i don't think we were dating but he leans in like he's gonna kiss me but instead of kissing me even though he was off guard he hugs me really hard to the point where i felt like something was wrong so he's hugging me really really hard and i start feeling pain because i'm like this so i push him away from me and um when i do that there is literally the rings of fires in his eyes and all of a sudden the dream cuts again i'm in this other scene in this scene there is the best way to describe it is this the ring of fire but it's closer it's under me and I can feel it directly underneath my nose and it's making my nose bleed everywhere. And it's disgusting. And then the scene goes back to where we're at. I'm looking at him, he has the fire in his eyes and then it starts burning my face because it's in his eyes. So instead of like pushing him away, like I originally did, I'm so worried about him and I have no idea what's wrong. So I hug him. And when I hug him, I kind of just knew it was that moment where I was like, I'm so sorry. Like, I felt guilty for some reason, basically. And after I hugged him, the scene cuts yet again. But this time, instead of going into that black room I was originally in with the fire, I'm in a black room with a pool of just murky, like, this color water. And something you probably didn't know about me unless you watched my last video is I do see auras. And my aura is blue. I am a very electric blue. It is the color of my wall, but I don't know how to show you. Like maybe I can, that wall, <laughs> that color. And my sad color is basically, okay camera, why are you not staying up? My sad color is basically this color. And um, it's one of my least favorite emotions. You know, sadness is hard to deal with, but I'm in this pool of water floating and all of a sudden a boat comes and it bumps into me and it's not painful at all it just bumps into me randomly and i step onto this boat and in the boat is jake and he's just chilling there so um i look at him and this time there's no fire in his eyes he has streams of rivers rushing out of him like he's been crying and it's literally just pouring out and it's terrifying because he's my best friend so I go over to him and I hug him and then as we pull away from each other, I'm about to say, I'm sorry. That was my first instant. Apologize. You did something wrong. And I open my mouth to apologize. Somebody does it for me. But the thing was, me and Jake were completely alone in this boat. So that was my crazy vivid dream. I hope you guys found this interesting and I will probably update you guys soon. So see you soon. Bye. <laughs>